you have a pleasant home in the city, a loving partner and a comfortable lifestyle. But a nagging sense there's got to be more to life. Could you risk everything you had at home to follow a gut feeling and move to the other side of the world? Emma Turley is chasing her dream lifestyle and believes the answer lies in New Zealand. I'm expecting lots of gorgeous beaches, lots of wildlife, lots of nature. Emma gets a bit tied up in the dream. I think, she, you know, she can run with it a little bit. But when a trial week down under fails to match expectations... Not stolen your heart yet? No, I just think it feels a bit like a cell. Money doesn't make you happy, but it makes you more comfortable whilst you're trying to be happy. Will she and partner Kerry be forced to admit a new life is little more than a pipe dream? I think I, I was more certain of what I wanted when I stepped off the plane than I do now. I thought I might have a bit more clarity now. Like dance. Boasting spectacular scenery that includes over 9,000 miles of beaches. New Zealand has a rich history reflecting a unique mix of Maori and European culture. Recognised as one of the most desirable places in the world to live, the country gains one new resident every 14 minutes and is currently home to over 200,000 British citizens. Teenage sweethearts Emma and Kerry have overcome tough times to achieve the life they have in the UK. But Emma's convinced their life could be better in New Zealand, even though she's never been. Having persuaded partner Kerry to share her vision of their future, the couple now have just one week to discover if the country can live up to Emma's high expectations or if sticking with life in the UK could be a better bet. Emma and Kerry's trial week takes off with 25 hours in the air, flying from London to New Zealand, and for Kerry, finally touching down in Auckland is a huge relief. Not a great flyer, so yeah, I'm so glad to have my feet on the ground. Some tears on the way, but yeah, glad to be here now. <laughs> yeah, taking off and landing, we get tears and panic, don't we? Yeah, so three takeoff and landings wasn't good. <laughs> With their journey behind them, the anticipation's building as the couple have their feet on New Zealand soil for the first time. I feel excited, yeah. apprehensive, a bit scared that we've come all this way and well, it's not what we hope it's going to be. Emma's slightly more relaxed. Now I'm here, it feels ace, so that's a really good sign. But she's aware the week ahead is no holiday. Our whole future kind of hangs on what's going to happen and whether or not we decide to make that final move. It really all does hang on how this week goes. As they head out into Auckland, both girls are anxious to discover if New Zealand really will live up to Emma's expectations. Back in the UK, Emma Turley and Kerry Wilson live in a modern apartment in Manchester city centre. We've worked hard and we've got a really nice lifestyle now, haven't we? But everything here is, is on our doorstep, literally. The couple are inseparable. We've got a relationship where we're not just partners, we're soulmates, we're, you know, yeah. we're really close, we're best friends. Emma and Kerry met at high school at the Welsh town where, from a young age, Emma was raised by her nan. I'm very, very close to it to my nan. I lived with her from the age of about four. My mum worked silly shifts, so it was much less disruptive for, for me to have somebody there who could take me to school and I wouldn't have to get up too early and that sort of thing. Emma's nan was to become a lifeline to Kerry too, when hard times at home forced her to move out when she was just 13. Kerry had a, quite a rough childhood, it was, things were quite difficult for her. Emma's grandmother took me in, cared for me, she became like my mum, she did everything for me, she was really nice, took me under her wing. Welcoming Kerry into her home, Emma's nan showed her what it was like to be part of a loving family, and that support literally changed Kerry's life. I went to high school and I had dyslexia. My reading was terrible, I couldn't read or anything. She basically taught me how to read and when I moved in I didn't have manners and things like that. She taught me simple things like manners. She took me and did everything, didn't she? So she was very, very good. I mean, so encouraging, so supportive. The girls went on to study at university and made their own home in Manchester. But despite having good jobs and enjoying city living, over the last three years, Emma's developed an all-encompassing belief a better life could lie somewhere else. 
I just feel like I'm at a bit of a crossroads in my life. I feel like something needs to change. I don't want to carry on like this for the next 35 years. I've always had a desire to travel, a desire to live somewhere else, to experience new cultures. She's never been but ever thinks New Zealand can offer the couple that little bit more. And slowly but surely, she's convinced Kerry. I think she has sold me the dream. The longer we've been together, the more we kind of realise that it is something we would love to do together. But while Kerry's expectations for New Zealand are grounded, it's not so much that we don't like Manchester, we're looking for Manchester with added bonuses so we can have so much more outdoor life as opposed to spending so much time indoors. Emma believes what lies down under is utopia. I'm expecting a cool, vibrant city, a very diverse culture, lots of gorgeous beaches, lots of wildlife, lots of nature. So I've got quite high expectations. The more practical of the pair, Kerry's worried the reality of life in New Zealand may not match the perfect picture Emma's built up. Emma gets a bit tied up in the dream. I think, she, you know, she can run with it a little bit, so I do think I have to pull her back a bit and, bit and say, can we afford the house? Can we afford to buy the food? Is it, is it a realistic dream? While Emma's biggest concern is the thought of leaving her beloved nan. Because she's done so much for us, I just think it would be... I think you'd carry a guilt, I think. I'd feel you? very guilty, yeah, that I, I wasn't there for her if she needed something. I'd find that really hard. But don't you let anything stop you going. Oh, no. If you like it, you go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. If New Zealand lives up to Emma's expectations, it'll mean breaking the close bond with her nan that's existed since childhood. Even thinking about having that feeling of that gut-wrenchingly difficult choice, even just thinking about that's horrible, so I don't even know how it would actually feel. Whether or not the grass will be greener on the other side of the world for the pair is unknown, but they've both decided now is the time to find out. I don't want to get to like 40 or 50 and be saying, I wish we'd gone, I wish yeah, we'd have tried definitely. it. I'd rather be at 50 and say, well, we tried it, it didn't work out. Well, and we tried it and it did work yeah. out and it's amazing. Yeah. really can offer the couple the lifestyle they believe. Emma and Kerry are visiting Auckland, home to over half of all UK emigrants in the country. Their base for the week is a two-bedroom apartment slap bang in the city centre. Very um, centrally located, doesn't it? Emma and Kerry are both keen to remain city dwellers, so this should be the perfect base. Oh, so you expect it. Wow. Window. It's like New York loft, isn't it? Wow. And we've got a kitchen. Nice, isn't it? Emma's excited by the cityscape outside. You can see the harbour. It's gorgeous, isn't it? But inside goes down well too. It's quite a nice size. It's big enough for us though. I think so, yeah. But as the couple settle in, the differences over what they'll need to have addressed in the coming week become clear. I think my main worries are that we've come all this way and it might not be what we expect it to be. I mean, what I've seen so far, it looks amazing, but it's... We've not been out there and spent a day living it yet. For Kerry, it's all about facts and figures and making 100% certain that things can work out for us. Whereas for me, it's definitely more the emotional ties that I've got to the UK. And the thought of leaving everybody there is, is quite difficult. Kerry senses Emma's already wavering at the thought of being separated from her nan. It's taken a lot out of us, the long journey, so it's whether it, you know, she, you know it's something that she probably a grandmother couldn't make the long journey. So I think that's that's weighing on her mind at the moment. The week ahead will prove or destroy the couple's hopes that New Zealand's where their future lies. It is do or die, you know, do we come out and and move to Auckland? It's all nice, you know, sitting at home in rainy Manchester thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice to go and live somewhere else? But actually, it has to work for us both. Emma and Kerry in the UK is a modern two-bedroom apartment by the canal in Manchester city centre. We really like our house, we like what it looks like, like where it is, so it actually it's a perfect house for us. So happy with their current home, what's on their wish list for property down under? In New Zealand we'd be looking for a flat of a similar sort of size. Yeah, city centre City centre. We'd want something of an equal standard, I think that's really important. I wouldn't want to move somewhere that wasn't as nice as what we've already got. Emma and Kerry's property search is concentrated in central Auckland. They have a maximum budget of £165,000 to spend, 
And with the city recently ranked seventh in a global survey of the most expensive places to live, they could need every penny. To find out what their money could buy, we'll show them three properties, two on budget and a third that could be their dream home. Only after they've seen each one will they find out what it's worth. The first property of the day is close to the couple's accommodation in the city centre. With museums, shopping and nightlife all on the doorstep, it should give them the city living they love. But will this two-bedroom apartment come up to scratch? It's okay, it's a bit strange. It's outside. Yeah, it's outside. That's quite nice though, isn't it? I like the fact it's high, it's a high floor. It is a high floor. Six floors up might not suit everyone, but Emma and Carey seem happy. You like a prison? No. Oh, and then, nice long corridor. Yeah. This is the main room. Well, it's nice and bright, isn't it? It may be bright, but... It's a bit small. It is a bit small than what we've got, but the actual living space. At best, it's bijou, though this apartment does come with a view. Wow, it is amazing. It's nice to have some outside space, isn't it? It is. It's nice looking out over the water, yeah. though, isn't it? And out over the hills. But Emma's more concerned with how things sound. I guess it's quite noisy as well. Yeah, here. there is a bit of road noise. You are overlooking the road. There's quite a lot of road noise. There is a bit, yeah. Noisy and tiny. This apartment's not a patch on the girls' house back home. Kitchen. It is a bit small. It's very small. You'd struggle to cook that, you would. I mean, there'd be a way round it, but you'd have to think about it, wouldn't we, and plan. But you can't, no matter what furniture you put in, you can't make the room bigger. No. No. I think that's the problem I've got with it, it's too small. A look around the master bedroom proves size isn't the only issue. That's quite strange with the glass. It is. You'd need some sort room. of a blind or something on there, wouldn't you, if you had friends staying? Yeah. Or like the light in the morning would wake you up as well, wouldn't it? I just think it feels a bit like a cell. You're overlooked and... It just enclosed, it feels... Bit. And I, perhaps the colour doesn't help, I no. And discovering a bathroom barely big enough for a bar of soap is the final straw. Right. Small. Yeah. Where would you put anything? That's it. You just wouldn't, would you? There's just no room. I think the feeling of the flat is it feels a bit like student accommodation, doesn't it? Yeah. It's far from the apartment of Emma and Kerry's dreams, but even so, is it within reach of the couple's £165,000 budget? How much do you think? I don't know. I think it might be the top end of our budget. I hope not. I don't think it's that much. I'd say closer to maybe £140,000. Only one way to find out. Shall we have a look? Yeah, go on. Okay. 149,000 pounds. So kind of middle, so closer. middle of our budget. Mm. I would not pay that no. that amount of money for, for this. No. The price does worry me a little yeah. bit. If that if that's the price for something of this size. Yes. Yeah. It's the size issue, isn't it? It's under budget, but this apartment's cost has shocked both Emma and Kerry. Will the next apartment offer a bigger bang for their buck? With plenty of supermarkets, restaurants and entertainment options, Auckland City Centre is a popular base for young professionals. Emma and Kerry could fit right in, but only if they can foot the bill. This one there. It's nice, doesn't it? Yeah, quite interesting shape. It is. Appearances from street level are good, but will this apartment have more space than the last? This is nice. Yeah, this is more like what we'd want, isn't it? It's bigger, but not by much. But I just think the, the living space is still small. It is small compared, to, compared to what we've got, but it's a bit more doable. And there's a distinct shortage of storage. I still think the kitchen space is quite small. There's no yeah. worktop, really. No, so that's no work... the problem. It's just literally a sink and your cooker. There's no... You've got a dishwasher, which is good. Yeah, there is space for a dishwasher, which is good. But, but it's things like um, kitchen cupboards, isn't it? Yeah, it's really lacking cupboards. I think... Why would you keep your food? Yeah. On the plus side, the balcony is a decent size. This is better, isn't it? This balcony Yeah, space. it's much nicer. I mean, it's quite private. Yeah, it's much more usable space, isn't it? Yeah, you don't take the chair. No, I, I don't mind this one. I think it's quite nice. It's much, much quieter. It is a lot quieter. It's nicer, isn't it? Yeah. For a while, the enthusiasm continues indoors. Okay. I've got a bedroom. Okay. Well, this isn't too bad. It's, it's nice over the window, though, in the corner. And yes. fitted wardrobes. That's more like what we've got at home, isn't it? Oh, yeah, fitted wardrobes. That's much better, isn't it? But it's not stolen your heart yet. No, it hasn't. I think it's more livable. We could live here. Yeah, it's more likely we could live here, isn't it? 
Mm, I don't know if I could. A bathroom with standing room only is far from a perfect fit for the pair. Right. To shower, no bath. Very small. Right. It's a cubicle, isn't it? So again, where would we put everything in? Think of all the hair products you've got, where would they all go? Simple exactly. things like that. Mm. It's a bit worrying. Mm. And subjecting the decor to scrutiny means more disappointment. The finish isn't as good here, is it? It's not as high spec as what mm. we've got. Considering our budget. It's quite worrying, isn't it? Mm. Mm. This apartment's been another letdown. Are Emma and Kerry expecting too much for their money? Their budget is £165,000. So what do you think the price will be? It's going to be more expensive. I think it's probably about £155,000. I think about 160, 165. Really, so top end. Top end. That price. Mm. 166,000 pounds. I think that seems very expensive. It's really disappointing. It is a bit disappointing. Really disappointing. I really thought we'd get more. With properties proving unappealing, the girls are beginning to realise the picture perfect homes Emma's dreamt of may be out of their reach. But they're not defeated yet. We found what could be the girls' dream home in the inner city suburb of Ponsonby. Previously run down, it's now up and coming with fashionable restaurants, funky shops and apartments with plenty of character. Property here could bring better value for money. It's nice, isn't it? It's very nice, yeah. The house is good. It's nice and stylish. Hopefully the two-bedroom apartment will be desirable too. It's very fancy. Very cool, yeah. It's nice in here, isn't it? This is more like it. It's bigger than the last two, and the modern furnishings are more to their taste. Good finish. It is. It's much nicer, isn't it? It is really nice, actually. Yeah, and there's a workspace. You know, yeah. Make yeah. Nice dining table. Yeah, there's plenty of room, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, we probably wouldn't even want a table that big. There's also a small balcony, but overlooking a motorway, it's probably not a major selling point. Oh, it is uh, quite noisy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very loud, yeah. And not open. Yeah. We here, like we have at home, our doors open when it's warm. It would be very loud, wouldn't it? Unlike their previous viewings, this apartment's a duplex, which definitely means more space. Like a little mezzanine level. That's quite nice. That's the least you could use, like, your little living room, you couldn't could you? just have downstairs as a dining room. This apartment um, is more what I was expecting, really. Mm -hmm. About time. The finish is a lot better here. It's much more high spec. Um, it's generally just a, a lot nicer. And sweeping views of the city don't go unnoticed either. I mean, you have got like panoramic city views, haven't like you? like a photograph. Yeah. It's really pretty. Finally, Emma and Kerry have found a place they can call home. But with a maximum budget of £165,000 to spend, will this spacious apartment be out of reach? I think it's going to be somewhere around probably £200,000. Mm. I think it's going to be over 200000 210000 maybe even. Okay. Time to look and see. Mm. Shall we have a look? No, don't want to see. Don't want to it's quite scary. Oh, you were close to £217,000. Really disappointed because it's so much money. It's a massive amount of money. I mm. thought 210000 was pushing it to £217,000 mm. is a lot over our budget. Yeah. Either the wages have to be a lot more to compensate or yeah. we would have to... Mm take a big step down in what we'd expect. And I'm not, I don't think I'm prepared to, to do that, really. No. Kerry and Emma's day has seen the reality of property prices in Auckland hit home. Property one was way too small for Emma, and the girls were shocked to discover that despite being tiny, it carried a sizeable price tag. Property two held more appeal for Kerry, but still wasn't spacious enough for Emma. And again, the price was more of a shock than a pleasant surprise. And although property three held much more appeal, discovering it was more than £50,000 over budget brought the couple back to earth with a bump. After a disappointing day, has the dream already been dented? Will the girls choose property at home or away? Based on the properties we've seen, our vote goes to... Yeah, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Nothing we've seen compared to 
holds a firm belief she and Kerry could get more out of life in New Zealand, but uncovering the astronomical cost of Auckland city centre living has left the couple reeling. The ideal apartment would come with a sizeable increase in mortgage payments, but if the couple can find the right jobs and salaries, the dream may not be over just yet. UK, Emma's a senior psychology lecturer at a university in Manchester. I really like engaging with the students, I really like teaching them, passing that knowledge on, you know, trying to instill some sort of passion, I guess, that I have for my subject. Another bonus with her current job is being contracted for a four-day week. I get a Tuesday off, which is really nice because I get to do other things outside of, of work, so I think I'm very, very fortunate to be in that situation. Kerry works full-time as a university administrator, looking after students' welfare. Work-wise, I would like to find a similar role to what I'm doing now within a university setting, um, but within a department that has opportunities to progress, because I, I really do love working in the university environment. Moving would mean leaving jobs they love. I'm not the most motivated person. I, I do, I find myself settling in a job and I'm quite happy to stay there. So it is quite a scary idea to, to move and start a new job. But that's a gamble Emma's willing to take. There is a lot at stake. However, I think the, the risk's worth it. I really do. After discovering how expensive properties are, Kerry's hoping what happens over the next few hours will bring about a better outcome. I'm trying to stay positive today. Um, I do feel like we've had a big knock yesterday and I think we're feeling very downhearted and starting to feel that maybe we've come all this way just to go back home. And Emma knows exactly what's at stake. I think today is make or break. I think even more so after yesterday because we really need to be able to earn enough to have a comfortable lifestyle here. Emma believes her PhD will improve her chances of employment. To see if she's right, she's visiting the School of Psychology at the University of Auckland, where she meets Professor Jenny Dixon. In terms of teaching and research, how does the work over here compare to the work that I do in the UK? We expect staff to be spending about 40% of their time on research, 40% of time on teaching, and the 20% is on uh, administration and service and leadership. That sounds really great because I certainly don't spend 40% of my work time currently on research, so that's really promising. A role here could be perfect for Emma, but actually securing one could be a different matter. I guess the job market here is pretty, um, it's, it's pretty intensive and competitive. When I was talking to the staff in the school, uh, they said to me there'd only been a handful of vacancies over the last few years, so I don't think the prospects uh, are, are particularly strong. Well, that's less encouraging. The good news is that if you are interested in coming to Auckland is that there are other universities in Auckland which also have psychology programmes. Right. Emma's chances of finding work look far from certain. Will Kerry's prospects hold more promise? She's visiting Auckland's University of Technology to meet expat and Deputy Vice-Chancellor Rob Allen. I think the, the first thing is uh, New Zealand um, isn't in recession and the job market generally is, is better mm -hmm. than the UK, but certainly at AUT there are always opportunities for people, um, as I found out myself when I, when I got here. Thankfully things do look more encouraging. What opportunities are there for career progression within the university? Well, we actually encourage people to progress. So any administrative staff gets five days professional development leave. They get $900 for that professional development as an entitlement. And in fact, we actually see that as almost part of your job. So um, fantastic opportunities. Back at the University of Auckland, Emma's keen to hear how flexible her hours would be if she was successful in finding work. Uh, my current contract in the UK is 0.8 full-time equivalent, which means I work four days each week. Are those type of opportunities available here? They are. Most people here work full-time, but uh, people can reduce the time they work in negotiation with their line manager. Foregoing her four-day week could improve Emma's employment prospects, but would the salary come up to scratch? Well, at this university, senior lecturers start on $97,000 and the range goes up to 122000 That's a few thousand pounds more than she'd earn full-time in the UK, but it wouldn't stretch to affording the apartment of the couple's dreams. Could an increase in Kerry's earnings make up the shortfall? Well, looking at the experience you've had over the last six years, I think you would be sitting in a band somewhere between around $45,000 and $57,000. At around £2,000 more than she earns back home, that's only a modest increase. When the girls are reunited, their disappointment is clear. So how did it go? 
Um, not as well as I hoped, really. Vacancies are very few and far between. Okay, that's a bit disappointing. So it's not really what I was expecting to, to hear. And how did you get on? More opportunities for progression. Um, salaries were very similar to her, which is disappointing. It wouldn't stack up financially, no. would it? Just two days in, and already Emma and Kerry's dream could be on the verge of collapse. Will there be any hint of optimism when choosing between work in the UK or New Zealand? We'll be voting for... UK. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going well. It's not what I wanted to be voting, really. No, I really wanted it to be really positive today. Um, Especially after yesterday. Yeah. I feel like the bubble's been popped. <laughs> With a double whammy of votes for the UK, Emma and Kerry's first trip down under isn't going according to plan, and the financial reality means their hopes for a new life could slowly be retreating. Emma's always believed New Zealand could offer a perfect balance of city life and outdoor activities. So when a day exploring the Kiwi lifestyle see both her and Kerry's spark for the country reignited. Yet again, they've been cruelly let down, and this time by the weather, as the tail end of a cyclone hits the city. With the resulting showers more Mancunian than Kiwi, the day starts indoors, as Emma and Kerry set off to explore Auckland's main art gallery. I like the wood. Yeah, the as well. It's very modern, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really nice, it's really pretty. The gallery is the largest art institution in New Zealand, with over 15,000 pieces. It's amazing, isn't it? Very so cool, yeah. The couple are culture buffs back in Manchester, so historic works by Maori and Pacific Island artists catch their eye. This one's very interesting. This is the arrival of the Maoris in New Zealand. Quite a distressing image. It is, it's very dark. Just like the sky outside, unfortunately. Stunning New Zealand scenery. The colour of the water is really nice as well, isn't it? It's literally the colour of the water that we saw down by the harbour. The morning may have been spent indoors, but the gallery was a hit. And venturing back outside, the girls are thrilled to see an improvement in the weather. Hooray, the sun's come out, which is always <laughs> a bonus, which is kind of another reason why this isn't like Manchester, yeah. because the sun rarely comes out there. Finally, could it be a sign not to give up on their dream? Making the most of the sunshine, the couple meet some very tame local wildlife in one of the city's parks. It's nice coming after work, isn't it? And if you had a hard day or something, you just need to clear your mind. We already feel a bit calmer. We said they'd be really fat and they were here all the time. <laughs> Moving to the harbour, the afternoon's much more in line with the glossy images Emma had conjured up has reignited my dream coming here. The past couple of days have been quite disappointing and quite difficult and I was really hoping that today would be fantastic and it, it really has been. But the trauma of the previous two days means Kerry is still cautious. It's really scary to think that we've kind of made this big commitment coming this week, we've kind of come to the city, really love the city and maybe now can't afford to live here which is, you know, quite heartbreaking. And it's not just financial concerns. Kerry believes the reality of being so far from home could be a real issue for Emma. She's not spoken to her nan all week and she, you know, she normally wouldn't go this long without speaking to her and I think she's already started to find that a bit strange and I think she's starting to feel that she's quite far away. So I think Emma's, I don't know if she's struggling yet, but I think it, the realisation of how far away from home we are is sinking in. An enjoyable day out may have reassured Emma a move would be right, but she's also beginning to wrestle with a decision she'll face at the end of the week. I feel very, very conflicted about leaving everybody back, back home. I, I do feel, um, I'm not sure how I'd do it. If, if I could do it, I'm still not, not sure. The day has shown the girls, although they may struggle to afford it, life in New Zealand could have its upsides. But is that enough for them to choose the lifestyle over the one they have at home? We've had a lovely day today, and based on lifestyle, we're going to vote.
I think it's kind of the reason we wanted to move, isn't it, for the outdoor lifestyle, so I think that hasn't changed. And yeah, it was just really nice to hang out up there and um, once it brightened up in the sunshine, feel the sun on my skin, it was nice and warm. Yeah. After weathering a stormy property surge and unsettled local job market, a touch of sunshine has finally landed a vote for New Zealand. A move could still be on the cards for Emma and Kerry, as long as the finances add up. The first step's getting a good price for their home in the UK. They believe it would fetch around £145,000. So we've sent round to estate agents to see if their valuation's correct. Oh, it's wet. <laughs> wet. It's weird seeing home. Yeah, it's a nice open plan um, living room, good size, um, nice light and airy. Certainly a bright welcoming entrance, um, good appointed kitchen, and nice views of the city centre. Good size bedroom, built in wardrobes which is good for storage. Another good size bedroom, currently set up as an office, um, nice and bright. Nice size paved balcony with lovely city centre views. A lovely bathroom, very stylish, um, beautifully tiled, beautifully finished. Can't fault it in any way. Yeah, Can't fault it. I would advise marketing at £168,000. If they were looking for a quick sale, I would advise marketing at 165 to get um, 160 The current value would fall in the region of £145,000 to £150,000. If the clients were looking to achieve a quicker sale, I would probably put the value in the region of £135,000 to £140,000. It's very different valuations. Yeah, that's kind of closer to what I thought, similar mm. to what we paid really. It would be somewhere in the middle. Mm. And that's not bad, is it really? No. The valuations are encouraging. To work out exactly how much their dream lifestyle could cost, we've compiled a cost of living comparison. Yeah. Let's have a look at the sums. The couple start with a weekly grocery shop. At first glance, everything's looking more expensive, isn't it? The girls are both vegetarian, and that's not playing in their favour. £4.18 more expensive, just for some frozen broccoli. Mm. We chuck that into everything. loads of stuff, don't we? What's this? Double Gloucester cheese. Crikey. We pay £1.77, and it's £9.16. The figures aren't looking good. So that gives us a difference of £74.88 a week worse off. Just under £300 a month more on food alone would mean a huge hole in the couple's finances. It's so expensive the, the calculator's even given up. Should we, uh, should we get the tablet and have a look on that? Yeah, OK. It's not a good omen. Basing their calculations on the dream property, the girls move on to the bigger outgoings. Mortgage in the UK is for 50 Yeah. Minus the New Zealand cost of a mortgage would be 1150 pounds so that's £749 worse off. Comparing their total spend in New Zealand with the UK, the result is disastrous. Which gives us a difference of... We'd be £994.73 worse off. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. So as you need to compare it now with income in, don't we? That's an additional £12,000 of spending every year. Could the increased earnings make up the shortfall? So we'd be £19.82 better off. In New Zealand. In New Zealand. They'd be in the black every month, but only just. And that's with Emma working an extra day every week. You'd be doing 20% more work, and that's not a 20% increase in salary, is it? But at least it's, I mean, it's more positive than I expected. Emma's refusing to lose heart in the dream she started, but Kerry's simply not buying it. You know, moving to the other side of the world just to be £237 better off a year. But that's in monetary terms, isn't it? What yeah. about in experiential terms, in lifestyle terms, in happiness terms? Money doesn't make you happy, but it makes you more comfortable whilst you're trying to be happy. Finances were always practical Kerry's biggest concern. Based on the day's figures, will they choose life in the UK or New Zealand? UK. Undecided. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. I mean, at least it's doable. It's possible it's doable. still. It's not, you know, it's not something that is impossible. We, you know, we still can do it. Mm. But it means a lot of discussion and a lot of thought about what's more important. Yeah, exactly. Moving to New Zealand may not make them rich, but Emma's convinced the couple won't be out of pocket by enough to dent her dream. However, she's about to be faced with the dilemma she's been dreading. 
the couple sit down to watch messages from friends and relatives at home in the UK. I'm feeling quite apprehensive actually about kind of seeing friends and family and listening to the things that they might say. Um, and I'm not quite sure how I'll feel afterwards. I think it's going to be quite strange. I think it could remind us what we've got at home, you know, what we'd be leaving behind. Um, I think it'd be, you know, it, we're really close with them as family and, you know, really good friends, haven't we? So I think it would be really hard to leave them behind, wouldn't it? Hiya, hi Kerry, hi Emma. Hi Kerry, hi Emma. Hi Emma and Kerry. Hi Emma and Kerry. Hope you're having a good time there in New Zealand. They, they like, they are soulmates. Um, I suppose that's what everybody looks for, you know, in a, in a, in a relationship. Emma's the potty boot. Yeah. Um, Kerry's the cook. Yeah, I think Kerry's the homemaker, definitely. Well, that would be the way to play. Well, Emma's just great. She's really unique. And uh, she's great. She's a great sister. And Kerry is like a sister. I've always known her. And in a way, I have three sisters, so. She's part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> If she wasn't there, we'd be saying where's Kerry? I personally think they should stay. Because the lifestyle they've got and their friends in Manchester and their life seems to be good for them at the moment. And I would hate them to think, I don't want to go in case it upsets Nan. Ah, no. Don't think that way. I don't want you to think that way. That opportunity's there. Take it. Yeah, well, they will be greatly missed, but you know, it's they're not that far. I think it'll be good for them, but I know that I might be quite sad. I might miss Aww. them because we're so close. I get to see them a lot. We do we miss them a tremendous um, amount, really. We certainly won't hold, hold them back in any way, and so we support them uh, wholeheartedly. All right, you two, you know that you're going to be missed, and I'm sure that you're going to miss people here, but life isn't a rehearsal. Go for it. Whilst I'd be incredibly, incredibly sad if you decided to move to New Zealand, uh, I know that you'll make the best decision for you and that, you know, even if you do move, I can come and visit you and I look forward to doing that. Don't worry about me or anybody else here. We'll be fine and we will come and see you if you decide to go to New Zealand. Okay? Enjoy it. Sounds like a threat. We will come. <laughs> yeah. That's really oh, nice, wasn't it? You're worse than me. <laughs> oh, I'm a bit more emotional than you, though, aren't I? I knew everyone would be keen for us to go, except you my dad. dad. Mm. Reinforce the fact that I am, I am one of them. And you know, I think I would be really, really sad to leave them. You know, it really would. It'd be heartbreaking to leave them, wouldn't it? I'm feeling very conflicted still. I feel I might have a bit more clarity now. But I don't. Yeah. Hearing those words from home was a heartfelt reminder of the emotional ties the girls had to the UK. Combined with the bad news they've been dealt with this week, will it mean Emma's dream for a new life down under has finally gone up in smoke? When Emma arrived in Auckland, it was with high hopes the country would offer her and Kerry more than they had at home. But just one week later, her confidence has taken a severe knock. Obviously, there's been a few ups and downs this week, and things haven't perhaps gone as I'd hoped or as I'd expected, really. So, particularly, uh, the cost of property was absolutely astronomical and really, really surprising. Kerry's concerns were always about the practicalities of moving, and she's seen most of her fears confirmed. I think I, I was more certain of what I wanted when I stepped off the plane than I do now, so I don't know. It's been a bit up and down emotionally this week. But Emma has retained a glimmer of hope when it comes to what New Zealand could offer her and Kerry as a couple. The lifestyle here has definitely won me over. It's nice to have the option to spend more time outdoors, not necessarily taking part in extreme sports or anything like that, but just spending time in the sun. Everything now rests on whether the lifestyle Emma and Kerry have been seeking is worth gambling what they've been leaving behind. New Zealand is the lifestyle we are looking for, and it, you know, this week's just made us realise that it is somewhere we really want to live, but the dilemma also lies in the fact that, is it financially doable? I'm finding it very difficult to weigh up the pros and cons and be objective, um, and I also think that I know which way Kerry's going to vote, which obviously makes it more difficult for me. 
This is a massive decision for us because it's our future. It's where we're going to be, you know, maybe six months, 12 months time. So yeah, it is a really big decision. And it'll be interesting to see what decision Emma makes. So will the girls risk everything or play safe when it comes to deciding where to call home? Based on everything we've seen and done during the trial week, our final vote goes to got a really really great life at home we've got really good friends we've got a lovely family we're really lucky to have what we've got at home mm. and I don't think we could have that here or anything close really Emma and Kerry's week in New Zealand has well and truly removed any rose tinted glasses and has shown them that the grass isn't always greener elsewhere it looks like they won't be giving up on their life in the UK anytime soon, but we wish them a long and happy future together, wherever they call home. See if Emma and Kerry changed their minds and made the move by going to the BBC website. We're down under with the British helicopter heroes, saving lives on the other side of the world at 11.45, coming to the rescue of a farmer who's trapped. Next, though, the hammer falls on homes in Stoke, London and Devon.